What's up, guys? It's your man, Donovan Sharp, and welcome to the 408th edition of TSR Live, your daily dose of red pill truth, wisdom, and awareness. It is Wednesday, February 13th, 2019. We are brought to you in part by Good Vibes CBD Oil. Good Vibes will not only drastically reduce your, ang your anxiety symptoms, you will also get some of the best sleep you've ever had. If you want to support the show and get your hands on the best and most effective CBD oil around, go to DonovanSharp.com and buy through my affiliate link. Use promo code Donovan15 to get a 15% discount. Again, that's Donovan15 to get 15% off. You can also purchase that on the Donovan Sharp mobile app. We are also brought to you by Tactical Soap. Tactical Soap is a natural pheromone soap that enhances alpha status, masculinity, attractiveness, and charisma. Tactical Soaps are formulated with bioidentical pheromone blends designed to enhance the alpha male attitudes that women love and men respect. You can buy Tactical Soap through my affiliate link on DonovanSharp.com or the Donovan Sharp mobile app. And be sure to use the promo code Donovan to get an additional 10% off. Be sure to subscribe to my weekly newsletter to stay in the know on all things Donovan Sharp. Being on my email list also comes in handy in the event that I get the platform here or anywhere else. Again, not going to blow up your inbox, guys. But if you don't want to miss anything, subscribe to the weekly newsletter. And finally, the Donovan Sharp mobile app is now available. It is the first and only mobile app in the Manosphere, and it is only available to my patrons. You can buy TSR merchandise, read my books, patronize my sponsors, as well as pay for and schedule consultations. And you can do all of that right from the app. You can also join Instadon, which is my private social media feed exclusive to mobile app to the mobile app users. Android users can get push notifications, so you'll always know when and where I go live, as well as announcements, such as new TSR gear styles added to the shop, release dates of my upcoming books, and so forth. So become a patron today and download the Donovan Sharp mobile app. Okay, let's go ahead and get to it here, guys. My guest tonight is one of the best male image and style consultants out there. He's been featured in 405 Magazine, Splurge Magazine, OKC, and the Oklahoma Gazette. He's been on the television show Living Oklahoma, and he's one of the most sought-after image consultants in the country. He made his first appearance on TSR Live way back in episode 141. Gentlemen, please welcome Kevin Samuels to TSR Towers. Kevin, thanks for making time to us for us tonight, man. We greatly, greatly appreciate it. Oh, no problem. Well, what's going on, guys? Can you got? Can you hear me? Am I good? Yep, you're good. I I, I hear you loud and clear. You definitely got the upgraded mic. So right. for the second straight show, um, we are not going to talk image consulting. We are going to talk about the red pill. Kevin Kevin is a guy who's always had red pill awareness. He just decided to channel his red pill awareness mm -hmm. into fashion and image consulting. But now he's going to start talking about red pill topics head on. And today's topic, Kevin, is it's not just about race. Right. Explain, take my audience inside why you decided to talk about this today. Well, you know, as I peruse around YouTube and especially how I kind of met you is I met you in the black manosphere, the Negro manosphere. And one thing that I noticed that far too often when guys are not successful uh, in their personal life or professional life, Race right. tends to come up a lot for right. non-black men, and I and I and and here's the thing: there's a kernel of truth to almost every objection, but it's more than about race. We, we've talked about even something as simple as dating. You know, there's that thing called the swirl movement where black oh, women God. are talking about dating out, and then. Oh, yeah, yeah, but yeah. here's the thing: I want men to become the best version of themselves. Period. And then let the highest caliber woman of all stripes buy for their attention. You want to be the number one draft pick uh, in your at your position, and that and in that it's not about race because you think about back in NFL quarterbacks. They used to say black men couldn't play quarterback. Right. So Warren had, Moon came along. <laughs> Warren Moon, Doug Williams, Randall uh, Cunningham, Randall yeah. Cunningham. Yeah. But now, now it's not even a now it's not even a question. Now it's like that's silly. Well, that's where I want guys to get to. I'm about got, taking all the excuses away from a guy that they can't control. And being, and being race is one that too many guys can fall back on and say, well, I, I can't date Becky because she doesn't like black guys. That's bullshit. And you, you've talked about strip, strip uh, club game, escort game. I used to love to fucking hunt escorts and strippers that say it all day long. No, no black guys don't want no African Americans. Please, I wanted to get those two just to prove to myself and them it's not about race. 
So that's why I kind of wanted to get into it because if we take race away from all guys, then they got to really look themselves in the mirror and say, am I really the best version that I can be? And can I get out there and compete? Guys, here's the, at the end of the day. You need to be able to step in the ring with anybody and know you can compete. And if you can't, you need to do more work. You can't say he beat me up because he was white. He beat me up because he is a no, 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 no. Take race off the table. And and the way you take race off the table is you put yourself at the highest level. I'm going to say this and I'm in. For everybody who still wants to fall back on race is still an issue. Okay, I don't see any black professional athletes uh, (laughs) longing for any feminine attention of women of any stripes. Sure. So if it really was race was that critical, it wouldn't matter what you had. Here's the thing, dude. Um, Game trumps all. Yes, Mm -hmm. there are. Listen, race plays a role in everything, including dating. And I think Mm -hmm. what you mean to say is that if black men acknowledge, yes, my race does play a role in Mm -hmm. how I am perceived by, you know, women of different races, but you can't use that as use that as an excuse. Darian DeBroussard says race doesn't matter in dating. This guy's inaccurate, inaccurate nigga. Call him by his name. Nigga, like, don't mm-hmm. say this guy. Don't, don't, don't come up in here. Matter of fact, Darian, why don't you give me a call? In one four two zero five five three five six. I think, I think Darian, I, I think he is. I think what he means to say is what you mean to say, and I think what Darian is doing is he's taking what you said out of context. Mm-hmm. You're saying that race doesn't matter, and when you say that race doesn't matter, what you mean to say is it does matter. Just don't use it as an excuse. Don't use it as a crutch. I can't date white girls because I'm black. Newsflash, right. newsflash. I'm black and I date a badass white girl right now. I've dated a lot of badass white girls. I have fucked a lot of badass white girls. Listen, the fact of the matter is, is that most white women don't re- don't openly date black guys. Did mm-hmm. I use that as an excuse to say, well, I can't date Becky. So, you know, most most Beckys don't want to date black guys. So I'm just going to give up. Fuck no. Dude, I stayed on my grind. I knew I wasn't going to date black women. So I expanded my horizons a little bit. I went with white girls, Latina girls, uh, his, um, um, uh, you know, Hispanic girls, Dominican girls, et cetera, et cetera. The number again is 914-205-5356. I think you and Darian are probably arguing semantics. Um, but, but again, you know, I think that Darian and listen, Darian, you can call in, you know, in case, in case you, in case you think I'm wrong uh, and I'm not going to play nice. Like if I disagree mm-hmm. with you, I'm going to tell you I disagree, but um, you know, the things that you've said, is um it 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 really will darian the things that darian has said it's very very broad let's Mm -hmm. get specific kevin didn't yes the words that came out of kevin's mouth is race doesn't matter race obviously matters what he means to say is that don't use race as an excuse for your failure or lack you know or lack of success Mm -hmm. you know it doesn't it doesn't work that way listen maybe race was a factor maybe it was maybe it wasn't a factor but if you use that as a, if you use that as an excuse, you're going to you're uh, you're going to use that as an excuse not to dust yourself off and try again. So if you go up and holler at a hundred white girls and you get a hundred no's up, fuck it, white girls don't want to date black guys. I'm out. This is it. I'm done. That's that that I believe is what Kevin was talking about. Well, Let you notice you notice Don, you notice Donovan how when no matter how I said it, you got it. Yeah, of course. No matter if I said race doesn't matter. It didn't bother you because you know you can, you can date whatever. You didn't yes. have to drill down into, well, yeah, race does matter. You see, when I see guys like this Darian guy, the first thing I want to do is I'm, I, I, you don't have your avatar up. What, what what do you look like, dude? What's your game like? Right. You know, I, I, go to, I go to your channel. All, right. I go to your channel and I'm looking. I'm like, you know, I, I, <laughs> dude, please. This guy's ignorant, man. He says society doesn't work that way. Like, no shit. Not all black men are professional athletes. Really? Because I play, I don't know about you, Kevin. I play for the Sacramento Kings, and then and right. then in the season, I go play for the Cincinnati Bengals. I'm a black man. I'm a professional athlete. Yeah, Darian, Darian sounds like a fake ass pro black, mm-hmm. and I still don't see Darian well, he, on the light. Oh, there he is. And one of his there channels is, is uh, Tariq Nasheed. Yeah, he, Tariq Radio, Jess Lee. You know, I want to hear what he has to say. Yeah, hey, listen, man, we're 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 definitely we're taking we're taking all comers. We got three guys on the line. Let us start with C in Vegas. C, you're on live with Donovan and Kevin. What's going on, brother? Hey, what's going on? Um, what's up, man? What up, guys? I feel like I feel like I'm going to take some arrows on this one. Well, listen. To be clear, I think the overall point is taken. Look, um, nigga, you stupid. <laughs> right? <laughs> no, dude. See, listen. C in Vegas is totally cool. We don't align yeah, everything. Right. We always have. We always exchange good ideas. So, what you got, man? No, I was gonna say, like, uh, listen, when it comes to dating or whatever, let's just, let's come right up to the middle. 
Yeah, look, and say you can't use race as a factor to some extent. You know, of course, race factors into everything. Of course, okay? right. into a lot of things in society. But it just, I can't say you can't. I'm not saying you guys are discarding it wholeheartedly, but there's there's a lot of things that it plays into. But to your guys' point, which I completely agree with, oh well, I didn't get the job, so it's whitey. Nah, just the dusty dude who just needs to this game up. Right. Still saying that's that's the way that works. Mm-hmm. That being said, like, there is just listen. There's a system here that gives white men, white men and women apparently advantages over us. I, I mean, I mean, I, I can't. I can only discredit that wholeheartedly. Am I wrong in saying that? Are you wrong in saying that we get disqualified for what now? Well, let me. He basically said the system. He's talking white supremacy. Let me just let me address this. All that shit works well on the, on the general point, but what happens one on one? When you are one on one at the individual level, it's about you. See, this is where this whole argument falls apart. That yes, race matters, height matters, penis size matters, yep. facial structure matters, everything matters generally. But when you're one on one, that's when it matters. You can be if if somebody looks like you. Kevin, as a, go ahead, go, go ahead. Kevin, you know what I'm saying? There's statistics that say, look, there are, there are qualified black men. And you know, qualified black men who go into job interviews, and they get discriminated against. I said you. See, I'm not talking statistics. I'm not talking. Hold on, fam. See, that's why I cut that completely apart. I said you, not statistics, not blackdemographic.com, not any of this shit. Again, hold on, hold on. No, look, we hold on a second. One on one, a black man goes into a job interview. He could be discredited outright. That's one on one. And he could win too. And guess up. Guess what? I'm a corporate. Hold on, fam. Hold on, fam. I'm a, hold on. Pump your brake. Pump your brakes, dude. I'm a corporate image consultant. I help. I work with guys applying for jobs. I've actually hired professionals. Look, dude. Every argument you can make, I can make three counter arguments. It comes down to you as an individual. Wait, wait, wait. Maybe that's wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Maybe that's you. Okay. Let's be clear about something. I'm and not- if it's me, if it's me, that means I'm better. Wait, I let you finish. Can I please finish just real quick? <laughs> what you're saying, I respect you. I understand what you're saying. However, you're one guy, and even Donovan said that there's outlier situations. Hey, I get it. You might be, you saying you might be the magic guy, but statistics and, and all across the board, you're one guy going against mountains of evidence. I get yeah. what you're saying. And I, by the way, I'm not saying hey, race means everything, but at the end of the day, there's a system out here. That insulates that insulates white people. You're right. Goodies and and, and good. Right. Right. Hold you're, on, you're, Kevin. Hang on, hang on, uh, Kevin. No, no, no. Listen, listen. See, you're right. You're absolutely right. Um, we do point out the fact, and I got other callers. See, I appreciate the call. Very, very good points that he's ahead. making. There, there's definitely, there's definitely a system in place, and yeah, you have to be, you know, outliers. But guess what? That's what this show is about. Mm-hmm. You have to make yourself the outlier. I remember I, uh, uh, a long time ago, um, I watched a, um, and I'll get to you, 413, your next 678, and 267, and it was starring Don Sheedle, and it was about a basketball player by the name of Earl the Goat Manigold. Mm-hmm. And he was a dude who was an unbelievable basketball player. I think it was back in the 1950s or 1960s, mm-hmm. and he was talking with Forrest Whitaker's character because he was thinking about maybe going into the NBA. And by then, his life was kind of coming apart because he had some issues. He got a girl pregnant, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. And I remember Forrest Whitaker was trying to sort of prop him up, right? He was like, yo, you know, you could be in the NBA, da 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 mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, Earl, Don Cheadle's character said, man, they only take two niggas in the NBA everywhere. And you know what Forrest Whitaker said? He said, and you could be one of them, right? right. See, in Vegas, listen, I respect the hell out of that, dude. I really do. But – but keeping these things in the back, or actually keeping these things in the front of your mind is what mm-hmm. hampers black men. Yeah, listen, we're not, and I'm not saying that C is saying that we are blind to this. Kevin and I are black. We see this stuff and, 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 and we experience this stuff every day. But if you keep that stuff in the front of your mind, ah, I'm going to go holler at this white girl, but chances are she's not going to want, she's not going to let me holler. You're, you're, you're almost hamstringing yourself before you even start, because here's the thing. If, <laughs> listen, if your game is tight enough, if you're confident enough, if you're about your shit, maybe a girl who wouldn't otherwise give you a shot. You know what? I don't normally date dudes like this, but I kind of like this guy's vibe. He's looking in the eye. Good yep. handshake. He's making me feel some type of way. Let me give this guy a shot. You go into a job interview. This guy knows he's not going to hire a nigga. But then somebody walks in there who talks just like his son. Well, wait a minute. 
I don't hire black guys, but this guy doesn't really talk or sound or act. even if I sounded like a hood nigga, he's like, you know what? Mm -hmm. This guy's confidence. I don't normally hire black guys because, you know, we want to take care of our own. But this is what the manosphere is all about. You mm -hmm. could be the outlier. So so again, with all with with all due respect to see in Vegas, I don't want to hear that the system is against us. Listen, we know this. We know that we don't we don't need statistics to tell us. Can I ask you a question, Donovan? Yeah, go ahead. If we had the conversation that CM Vegas wants to have, and we talked about it for an hour, two hours, three hours, what next? Sure. Right. I mean, I will say in corporate America, the higher up I went, I was the, the only black face around. I was in major account sales, uh, national account sales. I was a national account manager. Basically, these are titles to where it the higher up you went, the whiter in male it got. And right. here's the thing. I was there. There you go. I would and and funny thing is the black people that uh, were in customer service and on and, and in uh, the telemarketing department who were doing this almost the same job I was doing, if they would have decided to come over here and, and compete, they could have done it too. But hey, I hear what you're saying, see in Vegas. But at the end of the day, when you see a woman, it's one on one. That's right. I am sorry. I've 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 dated. I fucked too many women who you're the first guy I've ever been with. <laughs> first black guy I've ever been with. Sure. What, what makes me so special? And what make what makes me different than any of these other guys? The it stuff he's special. Up. What what makes you what makes you different from all the other black guys who have tried to holler because they have tried to holler? The difference is you. Mm -hmm. You are the, you are the outlier. Here's the thing: if ten niggas go up and try to holler at a white girl who doesn't date black guys, mm -hmm. chances are she's probably going to shoot down most of them. But the one or two guys that she doesn't shoot down, those are the outliers. Just like Forrest Whitaker told Don Cheadle's character, and you could be man, that girl don't fuck. Man. She don't fuck black dudes, man. She ain't fucked the niggas since blah 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 blah. Right. I see talking for niggas, but you know her dad is all on her shit. Yeah, you could be one of them. We listen. This is what we teach in the manosphere is that you could be the outlier. Let me read a comment here. I actually saw a comment, and I don't know. I don't know if it was. Oh, Camden McGinnis says, this is funny. This is funny. He says, quote, this is funny. I hear white guys complaining all the time that black guys get all the girls. Also, my white girlfriends on record previously told me they don't date black guys. So we got white guys complaining, oh, all the black guys get all the right. Girls. And right. Then black dudes talking about, well, all the white guys get all the badass white girls. Here is what those two groups of people have in common is no game. Right. If, you're white, if you're a white dude and you see all the white girls fucking niggas, that's because niggas got game. If you're a black dude who says, well, hey, the, 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 the deck is stacked against us. Yes, we know and acknowledge that. But this is what, listen, iron sharpens iron. Yes, we have to work twice as hard. We have to work twice as far to get half, twice as hard to get half as far. We know all that. But it's up to you not, see, here's the thing, Kevin. It's, it, it's, we choose not to give it power, right? And it's not like we're disqualifying the fact that race is, we know race is a factor. That is obvious. I don't need someone to tell me, Donovan, you know, when you go out here, man, like they see you as a black man, no shit. I've been black my entire life. Right. right. But I, I, I've been around this. I've, I've been around this long enough. I decided not to make it an issue. Now, when I get pulled over by a cop, you better believe my black ass is going to behave. <laughs> not right. but you know what I'm saying? Like, listen, right. at that point, race is definitely a motherfucking issue. But but again, when you're in situations where you're going in for a job and if you're trying to holler at a white girl or, or a non-black woman, listen, you know, you're fighting an uphill battle and you know that the odds are stacked against you. Does that mean that you give up? Did James Buster James Buster Douglas was a forty-two to one underdog against Mike Tyson? Did he say, you know what, Mike Tyson is uh, thirty-eight no with thirty uh, with thirty-six knockouts? He hasn't been past the fourth round in fifteen of his last eighteen fights. There's no way I'm going to win. I totally gave up against Tony Tucker. Nobody thinks I'm going to win. Fuck it, I'm just not going to do it. Guess what? James Buster Douglas shocked the world, right? Right. You can't. Right. James Buster Douglas still had to step into the ring and fight Mike Tyson. Right. He was the outlier. He was the first guy that did it. Dude, many came and many fell. But James Buster mm -hmm. Douglas is the one that did it. You understand? You can't beat yourself before you get into the ring. You might, dude, you might be fighting the biggest, baddest motherfucker out there. You might be going and working for White Man Corporation LLC, and they're looking for one nigga and 300 people. And right. you got 300 niggas lined up for the job interview. Guess what? You could be the person they hire. The, you could be the first black guy that a white girl wants to get a taste of. This is what we teach you to be, is to be the outlier. Let me tell you another part of the reason that's so ne so such a uh, negative thing. If it's always front of mind you are you are almost always going to misread situations if let's say you have a co-worker and you have a conflict and you just have an argument 
But if you think race first or race always, is he is he doing this to me because I'm black? I mean, it becomes a fucking cr cr uh, a, a, a cr rock cr around your neck. Yeah, it really is, man. So I mean, here's the net net of it. Even if you go for the job and you don't get that one job, you still took your shot. It's no different than let's say, let's just say me, Donovan, and a bunch of other guys went out and everybody saw the hot blonde and everybody wanted the hot blonde. And let's say Brad got the hot blonde, but I still took my shot and got the hot brunette. I'm still winning. Right, right. You know, Michael Jordan famously said, uh, you miss 100% of the shots you never take. There you go. Sports analogy. Nine one, we got plenty of colors on the line. 914-205-5356 is the number to call. Area code 413. You are on the line. Go ahead. God, that smells good. Yo, was that Ferragamo? What's going on? This is Darian. What's going on? Darian, what's up, man? You told me to call us. So I'll call in. What's going on, man? I told you to call in. If you got something to say, say it. Oh, yeah. So you're trying to say I have a point about the race then? Come on, man. Your black ass no. Of course it matters. Come on, man. No, you're gonna How have many to white be... women have shut you down? Say again? How many white women have shut you down? Oh, dude. Dozens. Hundreds. <laughs> dude, are you kidding me? Of course. Just as many black women. You proved my point, man. You proved just... my point, man. Hold on. Just as many black women. Kevin, Kevin, hang on. What? And your point is what? Darren, 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 look, does, Darren. Race does matter. That's the point. Darren, look at my screen, bro. Look at my screen. Whoa, 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 whoa. Look at my screen. It's Mr. Darian to you. You watch him off, okay? Say Mr. that again. Go ahead. Say it's that again. Mr. Darian to you. Now go oh, ahead. Oh man. Go hey, ahead. Hey, hey, nigga, hey, let me, hey, nigga, hey, let me explain hey, something hey, to you. You hey, are hey, not hey, hey, hey. Darian, my friend. That is my troll, area code four one three, who likes to call in every once in a while. I knew I recognized his voice. Darian is that dude, or whatever the fuck his name is. He is that nigga who hates on dudes like me, right? He literally just like if if he hasn't been watching, we just sat here and said, yes, we understand that race is a factor. We get it. We understand that, but we don't we don't use that as a crutch. We don't use that as an excuse to beat ourselves before we begin. He asked me how many white girls have you have have rejected you, dude? Hundreds, probably more than that. You made my point for me, bro. Look at the screen. Look at the look at that look, dude. Look at those legs. Look at that ass. Look at those titties. There's plenty where that came from. Like, get the fuck out of here, dude. Somebody, somebody, get the uh, Darian D. Broussard out of here. Darian, you gave yourself away. Darian is what we call a, and I don't even think Darian is black. I think he's Hispanic. But um, anyway, so Darian, you're out. Darian, you're out. Listen. <laughs> And again, this is what we're talking about. And I hate to be repetitive, but I want to make it crystal clear what we're talking about here. Race is a factor in everything. It has to be because we're human beings. We have eyes. We have ears. We get it. But it's just like Kevin said, too many black men use this. At, it's like a it's like a noose around your neck. Everything bad that happens to you, you blame on your race. And at some point it becomes to cycle. It, it, it starts to psychologically fuck you. To the point to where you start to hate yourself. Well, if this happened to me because I'm black and that happened to me because I'm black, I don't really think I'm black. And then you end up going the Sammy Sosa route and getting and getting skin whitening products and things of that nature. Going back to what you said, um, just right at the beginning of the show, I just wanted to address this before we bring on the next caller here. Okay. Um, black women cannot swirl. Okay. To watch or listen to the rest of this episode, go to DonovanSharp.com. Thanks for watching.